It's rare to see Studio Ghibli's iconic and instantly recognizable anime art style take shape in a video game, but developer Nab's team's isometric action-adventure RPG Baldo the Guardian Owls claims both Ghibli and The Legend of Zelda as its primary inspirations. Those are lofty ambitions, but Baldo rarely instills the same depth into its story and characters, and very little of it feels good to play. In fact, experiencing upwards of 50 hours of wildly inconsistent dungeon crawling and puzzle solving to reach its meager ending is more like wading knee-deep in a swamp than strolling through a park. The premise is simple but effective for what's intended as a light-hearted story about a young boy attempting to save a world in danger. This is a pretty standard Legend of Zelda-esque plot, and there's really no unique spin here. You'll spend a lot of time solving dungeons, exploring an overworld, doing quests, and then backtracking every time you receive a nifty new piece of path-opening equipment, like the Owl Bomb or the Sacred Fire. The main problem is lack of direction. Beyond the very first screen that shows you some basic tooltips for your controls, there is absolutely no tutorial. Many of the major mechanics, including the one that lets you shake yourself loose from spider webs, are not explained whatsoever. It doesn't help that the rest of the interface is equally egregious, often making basic tasks like checking your inventory or your quest list a much more arduous task than it should be. It's immediately clear from the first few moments in the first dungeon, the claustrophobic Lost Galleon, that Baldo is in rough shape. Not only is it horrendously buggy, which can result in a lot of lost progress, but everything from this initial dungeon crawl to the labyrinthine overworld to the painfully nondescript world map is a chore to make sense of. Aside from some vague dialogue or hints from the Rhodia Town Library or the help of the eerily chipper Minizio the Map Merchant, you're rarely offered guidance at all. Later dungeons, like the endlessly frustrating Savoka Prison and the hyper-tedious Bobo Pit are no better. They often find creative ways to waste your time and send you back to the game over screen rather than tugging you onward. <laughs> It's far too easy to simply fall off a ledge or dodge roll in the wrong direction because there's absolutely no feedback to help you guide Baldo around. It doesn't help that most of your important actions, like swinging your sword, talking to NPCs, or picking things up and throwing them, are mapped to the same two buttons on your controller, making it easy to accidentally talk to a companion when you really meant to attack an enemy. Baldo is also terribly fragile for most of the story. You start with only three hearts, and you don't have too many opportunities to get more until you eventually trek up to the visually gorgeous, but inconveniently remote, Owl Village during the middle third of the campaign. During all of that time, most enemies and traps deal a ridiculous two or three full hearts worth of damage. That'd be a tough challenge if the combat were up to it, but this is no Dark Souls. It's practically impossible to gauge when to dodge or block an incoming attack. The man-eating plants and giant spiders who can sit in the air and snipe at you from a distance are especially unfair and obnoxious. It's not impossible to learn how to navigate around Baldo's clunky controls, but don't be surprised if you see literally hundreds of game over screens before you've even taken your first steps out of the humble Kadoge village or reached the main hub city of Rodia Town. But even then, Baldo's combat is still needlessly unfair, even when you're reasonably powered up. You are always at a disadvantage against some of the tougher foes like the Robowl or the Kongmi, both of which are relentlessly powerful and only rarely expose their weak points. But hey, at least you can use the map's poorly laid out geometry to glitch these monsters into oblivion. Baldo's simplistic and cute art style is more than appropriate for an isometric action-adventure game that's clearly designed to fit in on the Apple Arcade as well as consoles. But there's something of a massive divide between its world art, which looks stunning in settings like the Maroi Desert, Rodia Town at Night, and the Owl Village, to clumsily name a few locations, and the character and item designs. Those are far less sophisticated, and often seem like children's sketchbook drawings come to life rather than characters and monsters out of a Ghibli movie. 
But the biggest issue with its visuals is the fixed camera, which often obscures important information and details about the world as you move through it. It's very possible to simply not see something that you absolutely need in order to get through the quest, and it's infuriating when an enemy can see you and snipe you from off screen before you're even aware it was there. Under all the aggravating bugs and shoddy design, Baldo the Guardian Owl is still a vast action-adventure RPG filled with puzzles and treasures to find. If you stick with it long enough, you can have some genuine fun exploring this Ghibli-style world and its simple story. But it hardly pays off by the very end. The vast sea of technical issues and unfair enemies you need to pass through with little or no direction before you get there make it easy to see a lot of people quitting Baldo before they've given it anywhere near that long. For more puzzle-solving adventures, check out our reviews of The Forgotten City or Wildermyth. And for everything else, keep it right here on IGN. <laughs>